talk more about it is the author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang. And Gordon, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Uh, what's your take uh, from these most recent provocations? You know, we were talking about a producer who came out on set just a few minutes ago, and he makes an interesting point. Does he understand that if the U.S. does retaliate, North Korea can be destroyed? Well, I'm sure the North Koreans understand that. But, you know, the North Koreans view the United States not as this overwhelming military power. They view us as having no political will. So, you know, there's been a series of incidents that began with the taking of the Pueblo, the shooting down of the U.S. Navy EC-121, the largest single loss of American life during the Cold War, all sorts of incidents. And the United States has never imposed a cost for killing Americans. So Kim Jong-un is probably thinking... Yeah, these guys are big, but they're not very strong. And by the way, Maria, that's the way the Chinese look at us as well, because they think they can push us around. And indeed, we have been pushed around. In what way? Well, for instance, you know, the, North, the Chinese, for instance, clipped the wing of that uh, Navy reconnaissance plane in 2001. So what happens? The planes there, they hold our aviators for about 11 days. That's they right. They strip the plane. This is a direct attack on the United States. And they get an apology out of us. So, you know, this is, is a, a recurring pattern. We apologize for the North Koreans taking the Pueblo in 1968. The Chinese saw it. This is a series of events that have ended, for instance, in 2010, when the North Koreans sunk that South Korean frigate, 46 people killed, no costs imposed. So therefore, we have taught the North Koreans and the Chinese that it's okay to go after Americans and South Koreans. Wow. But uh, what about Vladimir Putin's contention that the North Koreans, they are not going to let us pry their nuclear arsenal from their cold, dead hands? That is what makes them relevant. That was what makes them powerful. They'd let their whole country starve before they'd be willing to give up their weapons program. So do you think he's right? And if so, what do we do? Well, I think Kim Jong-un can't be convinced. But nonetheless, he's not the entire regime. So, for instance, if the Chinese, if they really wanted to, could signal to regime elements, generals, admirals, party members, that they no longer longer supported the North Korean weapons program and that they no longer supported Kim himself. And, and I think because, you know, China supplies confidence to this regime. We always talk about the economy, diplomatic support, all the rest of it. But the most important thing that, that China supplies is the confidence that they are safe from the United States. They're safe from South Korea. They can continue their provocative conduct because China will always have their back. If China changes its mind and signals that, then this regime is pretty much on the way out the door. Why would China change, though, Gordon? Because doesn't China ultimately want us out of uh, Northeast Asia? Rather that, that they that they're standing by an increasingly nuclear North Korea because they like the fact that we might feel threatened. You know, that's an important question. And the reason, you know, the Chinese aren't going to change their views on North Korea or anything else for that matter unless we impose costs on the Chinese. In other words, we've got to give them no choice but to do what we want. And we have the overwhelming power to do that. But, you know, administration in and administration out, we haven't done that. So, therefore, the Chinese feel that, yeah, they can do whatever they want because they know they can get away with it. And, by the way, Dagan, the same thing is also true for the Russians. You know, the Russians feel that we're not going to impose costs on them that really matter. Meanwhile, so, the president sp and, uh, spoke with his South Korean counterpart, uh, Moon Jae-in. Uh, yesterday, they spoke on the phone talking about intensifying the pressure on North Korea. So, in a statement, the White House said this, President Trump and President Moon can committed to continuing to take steps to strengthen deterrence and defense capabilities and to maximize economic and diplomatic pressure on North Korea. Then the president also tweeted this, and this got certainly a lot of commentary. I spoke with President Moon of South Korea last night, asked him how Rocket Man is doing. Long gas lines forming in North Korea, too bad. Gordon, uh, is, the, is this the united front uh, that, that we need to combat North Korea? Or, I mean, you know, Rocket Man, obviously, that's what people are talking about. It's actually appropriate. The guy is constantly playing with rockets. Yeah, well, he certainly is. Well, really missiles uh, rather than rockets. But, yeah, we get the point. Um, <laughs> missile man. You know, this is missile man. Um, the, the, the important thing here is that the Trump administration has been really quite good in, in making sure that Moon Jae-in, who, by the way, is a leftist who wants to support North Korea with engagement and dialogue, who wants to do everything that we don't want him to do. You know, he got elected in, oh, in really? May. And, and the tactical brilliance of the Trump administration has been to make sure that Moon doesn't do what he wants to do. So, for instance, Moon has now been talking about things that sound like they come from an American. So he talks about deterrence. He talks about how dialogue
dialogue is impossible and all the rest of it. That's good. And that's really the result of the administration pushing and working very hard on South Korea. Uh, so, Gordon, you talk about past administrations being pushed around. It, it seems like the Trump administration is so far talking very tough, but th it seems like they're letting it be known that there will be military action if a certain line is crossed. And I, I think at, at the very least, they have to believe that to some degree more than they would have from past administrations. Yeah, I think so. What the important thing is that the Trump administration last week of June imposed a series of costs on Beijing for supporting North Korea. And that's a good thing, but what the administration needs to do is then to follow up, because the Chinese are not listening. You know, they're still trying to dilute and uh, delay Security Council sanctions, which they're quite successful at. Um, we have not yet told the Chinese that there is a cost for doing what they're doing at the U.N., and indeed, the same thing again with the Russians. So, for instance, we have, uh, you know, the ability to, first of all, take down their banks. You know, there's this Section 301 trade investigation for intellectual property theft. These are all sorts of points of leverage that the administration has threatened to use, probably will use at some point, but I'd like to see it sooner rather than later because, as H.R. McMaster just said in that clip, you know, we don't have time left. What about, the, just really quickly, the administration putting a stop to Lattice Semiconductor getting bought by, the, by a Chinese entity? Oh, what, great thing. And, and we really need to not only sort of block individual deals, we need to review the entire process of acquisitions by Chinese companies of U.S. tech. Because, you know, it's an issue of reciprocity, it's an issue of the Chinese using this technology against us, all sorts of things that we really need to look at in depth, not just Lattice, but all the rest of the acquisitions positions as well. But one question that I've been asking on this subject is what, what's the impact to the U.S.? I mean, we talk a lot about the potential for further sanctions against Chinese banks, for example. Wouldn't that impact the U.S. economy yeah, and U.S. banks? Well, it would in, it impact our reputation as being a neutral place to do business. That's it? And that's, I mean, and, and of course, the, the Chinese could do other things. But, you know, we are beyond the call point where there are no cost solutions. And indeed, the fact that we take an action that costs us tells Beijing that for the first time in decades we're serious about our own security. So the fact that there is a cost to us I think is an advantage because we need to tell the Chinese in a very direct way that we are going to protect the American people. We're going to put that first. We're not going to put the integration of the Chinese system, you know, Chinese into the international system first, which is what previous presidents have done. We need to protect the American people. I'll say it. I'll say it again. I think that the North North Korea's story is going to define this president. Uh, this is going to be the biggest story of this administration. It's pretty incredible what has gone on in these last six months. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that is going to be where people will judge Trump. Not, you know, maybe a year from now, but 10 years, 20 yeah. years down the road, they will say that this is the defining event. Gordon, thank you. Great Thanks to see you this you. morning. Gordon Chang, uh, as always, uh, really expert uh, analysis there.